Hey everyone, KJ4YZI. Remember about a year and a half ago, I think we talked about FT8, made a couple videos explaining the new digital mode that came out from the developers of JT65 and JT9. FT8 took over by storm. I mean, people just aborted phone and CW and went right to FT8 to make those contacts. And if you don't believe me, before we go on to this video on this new topic, let me show you. There's 20 meters. Dozens of FT8 stations. There's 40 meters. It's not even gray line yet, still daylight. 30 meters. 30's a great man, day and night. Right now it's 6.05 p.m. That clock's not right. 17 meters, because 17 never opens, they say. FT8. Well, there was someone on 15 earlier, but you get the point. FT8 is everywhere. And I've, I've gotten past the point where I hate it because I thought, well, you know, it's actually contributing to what I've been preaching for the last eight months. Yes, we're in a lower solar cycle, but the bands are not dead. That's proof right there that the bands are not dead. I just choose to call CQ on phone and make dozens of contacts every single day. But regardless of the fact, FT8 has taken over. Now, what's better than FT8? By the same developers of these modes, FT8, JT65, JT9. How about FT4? Frank Taylor, 4FSK. FT4 is probably what every FT8 user is going to want. You can decode not as not as efficient as FT8. FT8, you can decode stations or signals 20 dB below the noise floor. FT4, you can decode 10 dB below the noise floor, but you get a 2.5 time faster rate. So now seg uh, seg segmented messages are not 15 seconds, they're six seconds. So this is primarily geared for digital contesting. For those who want to use contesting on different days, if you've never seen a contest day on this frequency, you're in for a treat. The last contest that I saw where people used FT8, it was my receiver said overload up here. That's how strong the signals were. I couldn't believe it. It was like 40 over 9. But it's right now an experimental digital mode, but it's designed, again, specifically for contesting. So maybe you're not into contesting. Maybe you want to use FT8 the way it has been because you want to dig out weak signals. That's fine. But maybe you want to rack up double the contacts at a faster rate because the bands are in good shape you could use FT4. We're gonna talk about FT4 right now. Place to come for amateur radio videos. The question everyone's going to ask is where do I download this new software? Is this going to be like the JS8 call that came out when they had to go through and join groups? No, it's the same place that you downloaded the same WSJTX for FT8. Normally, you go to this link, which is in the description of the video, and you come down here to installation package for WSJTX 2.0, which is normally what everybody is using now, the current release. If you want to operate this experimental FT4 mode, you want to go down on the page to the release candidate version 2.1.0-RC5 right here, installation package. Download for the appropriate version of your machine, Windows, Linux, or Mac. And that's going to include the experimental FT4. Once you download that and install it, you're going to come up with a program that looks really reminiscent to what you've been using on FT8 this whole time. The only difference is a message pops up and says, this is a pre-release version of WSJTX 2.1.0 made available for testing purposes. It will become non-functional after June 7th. Why? Well, they had some debate on 
Will this be used or usable for the ARRL contesting on June 22nd, which I think is field day? And the answer is, well, there's going to be some bugs to work out and some other things. So they're going to expire the software at June 7th. Maybe they'll have a new one by then. But that way, it's worked out before they consider this appropriate or usable for contacts with the ARRL weekend on June 22nd. So other than that, we have plenty of time to use it. Now, if you're looking at this right now, this looks really reminiscent to what you use on FT8. We're going to go up here to the mode, and the only difference is you see there's an FT4 option. But for now, while I'm talking, we're going to go to FT8. Now, for those who have never seen FT8, if you're like, what in the world are you talking about? What is this program? What is this little waterfall here? What are you talking about? Well, go back to my video first on what is FT8 and how it first came out, and you'll ex you know explain that to you, and then you'll understand when you come to this video about FT4. For those who are deep into their entire radio career, devoting every hour of their life to being a contact on my list here, you will be really familiar with what this is. So FT4, the difference with FT4 and FT8, well, FT8, you can see here, this little bar down here counts. You know, it's normally 15 seconds per message. Count it, 1 through 15. And that's usually 12 seconds of transmit and 3 seconds of decode. Uh, or on the receive end, it's 12 seconds, and then it takes 3 seconds for your computer to decode those encoded bits. Well, FT4 is more efficient because they encode it different to where it only takes 6 seconds. And that's when I have my radio on, that's usually four, right when it hits 5 seconds. So it's 4 seconds of transmit and 2 seconds of decode. Or 4 seconds of receive, 2 seconds of decode. But think about that. You could do the same amount of contact in less than 45 seconds on, F on FT4. So for it's primarily geared for contesters because, again, the bands are not always in the pot. Okay, You may have plenty of propagation that weekend, and you want to make more contacts. FT4 is the way to do it. Now, being that it's that much faster you lose a little bit of efficiency. As we talked about, FT8 can decode signals 20 dB below the noise level, whereas FT4 can decode 10 dB. Now, that's still a big deal, 10 dB below the noise floor. And you may be thinking, well, I want all the efficiency there is. Well, I got news for you. When you turn it on that weekend and you can't find, you know, your S9 plus 20 on your receive with FT8, you may have, Plenty of stations to work on FT4 with even 10 dB below the noise. You know, that you don't have to have 20 dB below the noise when the bands are open. The bands do open. They're not always dead. Okay. I make contacts every day. So, anyways, here is your water, uh, waterfall, water graph, spectrograph, whatever you want to call it. And you can see the difference here is FT8 uses these little 15 second wide windows here. And look how small they are with FT4. But you get the same idea, right? I mean, all these right here are all FT8 signals. That's why they're not fitting in those little bars because everybody hasn't caught on to the FT4 yet. They're still on FT8. But really nothing to learn differently. The only difference is it's faster with a little less efficiency. So FT4 may be what you need to fill up that logbook, shut your radio off, call it a day, sell your equipment, and then start farming for the rest of your life because you worked all contacts. <laughs> a little bit of sarcasm here, guys. Uh, so anyways, FT4, that's where it is. Not much to show you. Not much to rant about. Video, I guess, in under 10 minutes on trying FT4, and maybe I'll give it a shot, and then I'll move on. That's just how I do it. I like to try something new. And I move on. 7-3, guys. Thanks for watching. Go out there. Download the new WSJTX release candidate for experimental FT4. Let me know in the comments what you think. I'm curious to know what you think. And I'm going to ask this question. Why would you not use this? It, besides, besides the fact that, well, it's only 10 dB below. I use 20 dB below the noise floor with FT8. 
But if it's faster and you're still decoding signals 10 dB below the noise level, why would you not use FT4? Just want to know. 7-3, guys. KJ4, YZI.